Alright, coming in at number 10, we have Pompeii. Pompeii is such a sad tale. As many of you are likely to know from history class, Pompeii was an ancient city near modern day Naples in the Campania region of Italy. The issue with Pompeii that it was built at the base of Mount Vesuvius, a volcano that spilled her fury in 79 AD. The city had been in existence for thousands of years before the eruption, and by the time of its demise, it was a thriving Roman hub. The eruption covered Pompeii in four to six meters of volcanic ash, burying the city but largely preserving a snapshot of Roman life. The lost city of Pompeii was rediscovered over a millennium and a half later and was excavated in the late 1800s. These days, more and more of the city is being uncovered under the ash and pumice. The area draws in 2.5 million tourists now each year who delight in the macabre history of the Roman town. Indeed, it is possible to see ash covered corpses of bodies nearly 2,000 years old. Coming in at number 9, gone overnight, we have Chaohu. With a simple flick of an administrative wrist, the Chinese city of Chaohu disappeared overnight, which is pretty worrying. Can China just cancel cities these days? It seems so. Chaohu was a city of 4 million people and was known for housing a Han Dynasty tomb and a large freshwater lake. It seems that the Chinese government is pretty obsessed with economic statuses and statistics, and the reason that the city was effectively deleted was to adjust its borders, giving lands in nearby cities to make them seem more profitable, which actually sounds kind of crazy, right? The worrying thing is, though, is that there was absolutely no public consultation or official notice, and residents were only aware when they were told that they were living in new parts of old cities. So I live in Toronto, like I said, and I guess it's like waking up in Toronto and it no longer being a thing, and I'm told, like, oh, you live in East Niagara now. I guess not a lot would change, but at the same time, everything would change. Weird. So weird. Okay, pinnacle of weird at number eight, we have Tored. Where is Tored? Is it a place or does it exist beyond our universe? We have talked a little bit about the man from Tored on Most Amazing a few times, but now I want to talk more about the country itself. But first, let me recap. In 1954, a man was detained at the Japanese border in Hanenda. This is in Japan, and he arrived on a plane from Europe. The man was affronted at the border control officer's questions. He claimed that he was on his third business trip to Japan that year. When he was searched, he had a wallet filled with a mixture of currencies, seeming to verify his business traveler status. When he presented his passport, officials were absolutely baffled they'd never seen a passport like this before. Asking where he was from, the man who primarily spoke French said he was from Tored. I'm sorry, where? Officers were absolutely baffled because, as you probably know, there is no such place. When he was asked to point to it on a map, he pointed somewhere in the locale of Andorra today. He then became confused and agitated that the map he was given didn't actually include Tored. So, was it real? Did it disappear or did he appear from another dimension? His passport looked legitimate, but he was from the mysterious country. His passport even had stamps in it, legitimate stamps, that seemed to actually cooperate with his story. He was also carrying a checkbook to a non existent bank branch from Tored. So I guess my question is even if the passport and checkbook were convincing fakes, how on earth would he even have been able to get on the plane in the first place? Passports are checked at multiple times when you go to an airport, including at check in and before you're allowed to even board. I, for one, have like a deep feeling that Tored is real, but where did it go? Once again, I ask. Is it in another dimension? Because I don't know. I think maybe I think that. Speaking of other dimensions, this is crazy at number seven. We have the Cloud City. This terrifying city in the sky appeared and disappeared within the space of a day. Chinese media went wild when thousands of residents who live in two different cities in the country spotted what looked like a huge floating city in the sky. Have a look and tell me what you think. Like, what on earth could that even be? The phenomenon was described as being a ghost city by onlookers who saw skyscrapers in the clouds. To me, I'm thinking this is another sign of a parallel universe or something. The phenomenon occurred in both Guangdong and Jiangxi, with some believing it was an alien city. The images were caught on camera for the world to see, so I have to say, what on earth or above earth is going on? Even though it looks like a city in the clouds to you and me, apparently. 
apparently it's an optical illusion called Fata Morgana, which is a natural mirage. That being said, hundreds of people saw this disappearing cloud city, which to me makes me think that actually there might be more to it than simple mirage. A reappearing city up next, we have Villa Epicuan. Oh my goodness, wait until you see pictures from Villa Epicuan. Villa Epicuan was a tourist resort near Buenos Aires in Argentina, but unfortunately it flooded in 1985, meaning the whole town had to be abandoned. Disappearing into the water, Villa Epicuan became a sunken town lost to the perilous tides. However, strangely, the waters began to recede again in 2009, and now after a drought, you can see more of the town emerging from the water than ever. 25 years after it disappeared, it began to reemerge, only this time stripped of paint. The trees have died after their time away from the sun, leaving ghostly, chalky looking twisted roots and leafless branches withering in the ground. Rusted cars and dislodged bathtubs litter the banks, but honestly, it actually looks kind of cool in like a ghostly, scary way. Coming into number four, we have Ashley. The story goes that in August 1952, the small town of Ashley in Kansas, USA, disappeared following a magnitude 7.9 on the Richter scale earthquake. The earthquake was said to have taken place at 3:28 a.m., meaning the town's 679 residents were all in bed. The epicenter of the earthquake was none other than Ashley Town Center. Uh oh. Now the urban legend says that when state law enforcement arrived at what should have been the outskirts of the farming community, they found a smoldering, burning crack in the earth, measuring 100 yards in length and approximately 500 yards in width. Back in the day when we did things in yards. The depth of the hole was never determined. Many people think that the story of the disappeared town is none other than a creepy pasta. Others say that there was indeed an earthquake on record in Kansas and that the town was lost, being too small to be on any maps in the first place. Honestly, I'm not sure. Coming into number two, we have the crazy story of the town on fire. Did you know that there is a legitimate abandoned town in Pennsylvania that is not only empty, but has been on fire for decades? Centralia was a thriving mining town in Columbia County with a population of a few thousand. These days, just seven remain, clinging on to their doomed homes. It seems that all was well in Centralia for a very long time. It had been an active mine since the mid 1800s. Unfortunately, since 1962, it has been burning from the inside. It is suspected that the fire started from deliberate trash burning and could well keep burning for a further 250 years, which is absolutely insane. The residents first noticed the fire when smoke began billowing from the ground, accompanied by a foul smell of burning trash. Not only that, carbon monoxide was detected seeping from the ground. With temperatures hotter than the planet Mercury, it was decided that it was too dangerous to even try putting out the flames, and as a result, the town was evacuated slowly. But many people remained living there until 1981. That was when a 12-year-old boy fell into a sinkhole that suddenly opened up in his backyard. He survived by clinging onto a tree root, but from the hole came a plume of hot steam found to contain poisonous gas. That was it for the rest of the town. These days the town is deserted, save from seven people who just won't leave, but once again, that fire still burns. Okay, are you ready for the saddest story that you'll hear today? Coming into number one, we have Ordor Suglane. This town was eradicated in one day at the merciless hands of the Nazis. During the German invasion of France in the Second World War, the village of Ordor Saglane was the subject of a bloody massacre. On June 10th, 1944, SS soldiers destroyed the village, killing 642 of its inhabitants. There was one sole survivor of the attack and 20 escapees. Now, the SS invaded and rounded up men and shot them at point blank range in the barn, which actually may have been a better fate than that awarded to the women and children. They were rounded up into a church that was then set on fire by the German soldiers. You can imagine how that ended. Former French President Charles de Gaulle ordered that the town remain untouched as a memorial to those who lost their lives there. Cars lay in ruins, buildings are crumbling, and shops contain what was left of their stocks after the village was ransacked. Tourists can now visit the town remains and nearby memorial centre. I'd actually love to go and pay my respects. It sounds creepy, but honestly, historically, really cool. I'd better watch out though, because the ransacked town is said to be haunted, and like, of course it is. Coming in at number 10, we have the unreached. 
unreachable town of Urkhammer. Is this a true story? If so, well, I'm scared. It seems like there did indeed used to be a town by the name of Urkhammer in Iowa in the early 1900s. It was a farming town with a relatively small population. However, it was noted in the mid 1900s that it had been entirely abandoned and nobody knows why. That isn't even the scary bit either. There is a worrying story associated with the town. Whether or not it's true or false, I simply don't know, but well, have a listen. A tourist passed through the town in the early 1950s and bought some gas at a gas station. As he drove out of town, he realised his gas star was still on empty. Sure enough, he'd been ripped off. He turned around to confront the station workers, but he never seemed to reach the town. He was sure that he'd only been driving for five minutes, but after turning around for ten minutes, he actually never made it back. Soon he ran out of gas and decided to continue back into town on foot. It was his only option really. Didn't have any gas. He kept walking and saw the town in the distance, but he could never reach it. Eventually, he was picked up by a passing car who said that they had not driven through a town for hours. Weird. Coming in at number nine, we have Luto Catuto. Sounds fake. In March 2018, a major landslide led to the destruction of over 100 houses, wiping away the small town of Luto Catuto overnight. Have a look at the damage. The landslide has led to Luto Catuto being dubbed the town that the earth swallowed and it's easy to see why. Now the cracks began appearing around 10 years before the major landslide in March 2018 but the government simply told the town residents to fill it with dirt. Town resident Giorgio Abeja spoke to the press and said that a loud noise woke him up in the night. The town was sinking. Luckily he was able to escape with his life. The town should never have been built on the clay ground as it was always vulnerable to landslides. Sad Sadly, 106 families were displaced as a result of the sinking. Another town swallowed whole at number 8, we have Bayou Corny. The controversial case of Bayou Corny sinkhole has been settled with the Texas brine company at fault. In 2012, the town of Bayou Corny was evacuated when bubbles began rising in nearby water and there was increased seismic activity in the earth. Tim Murphy, a journalist for The Atlantic, said that Bayou Corny is the biggest ongoing industrial disaster in the United States that you haven't heard of. For some reason, nobody really talks about it. 350 residents have been turfed out of their home because their town is sinking before their very eyes. The disappearance of this town led to it being dubbed as Demon Alley. Coming into number 7, we have the New City Complex. The New City Complex was built in West Milford, New Jersey. The town was located along Route 32 and was built by the city of Newark water and reservoir plant in order to provide housing for plant workers. Located along Route 23, the town is now entirely abandoned and nobody knows why, although of course there are theories. It is said that the town pretty much dissolved overnight in 1992. Rumour has it that the steaming exodus happened after a dodgy person moved to the town in the late 1980s. Others say that the town was never a town at all, just a set of a movie which has been left to crumble. So is it an inexplicably abandoned town or an urban legend. Coming into number 6, we have the Roanoke. What happened to the people of Roanoke? It is a question still baffling us 430 years later as it seems that not one but two occasions the town actually totally disappeared. Twice! Let me start from the beginning. In 1585, a small group of settlers made Roanoke Island off the coast of North Carolina their home, although many left when they found the conditions to be unsatisfactory. In 1587, 115 English settlers came to join those who had left, but weirdly, they found no one. Like, absolutely no one. Weirdly, though, they didn't seem to be too disturbed by that, assuming they must have just upped and left because they didn't like it. At the time, the colony decided to send their governor, a John White, back to England to gather fresh supplies and fresh settlers to expand the colony. He went back and then three years later he returned with his supplies to the colony. He'd left his wife and daughter there, he was expecting a big reunion. But once again, he found no traces of the inhabitants. Just like the time the settlers had arrived, only this time he knew something was wrong because his family wouldn't have upped and left without telling him. The only clue he found was the word Croatoan carved into a wooden post, which is extremely strange. So where did the settlers of the Roanoke go? They were absolutely never seen again. Now some theorists say that they were killed by a Native American tribe, although the fact that there was no trace of their bodies is absolutely suspicious. Others say that they decided to 
sail back to England for some reason or another but got lost at sea, but again, I'm saying this town disappeared twice so there really has to be something else going on. Coming into number 5 we have Christmas Arizona. I love a good abandoned town, I really do. I went to Calico in California back in December 2017 and it was so interesting and spooky, but now I really want to visit this town even more. Meet the lost town of Santa Claus in Arizona. Santa Claus! The town was so popular with Christmas lovers despite its untraditional setting in the desert. The town was founded in 1937 and created as a Christmas resort, just you know, cuz. A Swiss chalet, and no I don't mean the chicken place, a Swiss themed house is what I mean, and plenty of Christmas trees, a life size dollhouse, a Christmas themed inn, basically kids could sit on Santa's lap all year round and they loved it. Until they didn't. Just stop being a town. It's now abandoned by the side of the road. Instead of Christmas pies and elves, all you'll find these days are rattlesnakes, and while I love the sound of this, at the same time I feel like it would have sucked for the employees. I once worked as an elf in a toy store and I felt like I had too much Christmas, so the actual day was a bit of a letdown, so imagine that being all year. To be honest, I'm actually thinking maybe Santa Claus in Arizona is better off disappeared. Coming into number 4 we have Petra. Petra is located in southern Jordan in the Middle East and was settled in the early 9000 BCE. By the 4th century BCE it was the capital of the Nabataean Kingdom. Petra was carved into the rock but after the Roman Empire took over the city it started to disappear. At first the population diminished in around the 7th and 8th centuries, then the city became abandoned for centuries, with very little footfall due to its remote location. Petra lay forgotten and all but disappeared as a result of natural disasters and neglect. It was off the map for a very long time until Swiss explorers rediscovered the city in 1812. As stories dribbled back to Europe of a lost town, intrigue grew. Local folklore claimed that the city has been created by the Wand of Moses having actually lost touch with the actual history of the forgotten city. In 1929 archaeologists led an excavation of the city, in 2016 even more of the city was discovered buried in the sands. Coming into number 3 we have the cities of the Amazon. When the dastardly colonists invaded swathes of the world, they brought back stories when they returned to their homelands. The Spanish returned home to regale stories of vast cities made of gold and filled with treasure along the Amazon. Some called it the city of Zed and other called it El Dorado. This led hungry explorers to seek out the cities, only when they got there they never found them, ever, all they found was thick jungle. The golden cities the early pioneers had spoken of became nothing but myth and legend, that was until recently. In 2010 aerial images taken by National Geographic revealed earthworks spanning 155 miles in the Amazon. As Amazonian rainforests have been cleared for agriculture, further evidence of ancient pre-Columbian movements have been found. So speaking of this somewhat mythical, we have Atlantis at number 2. So bearing in mind that a lot of people believe that the Amazonian cities were a myth but now it's looking like they may well have been legit, what do we think the deal with Atlantis is? It's enduring, I'll say that. Atlantis is a legendary city that is mentioned in a number of pieces of ancient Greek literature, including by the late great philosopher Plato. It is said that Atlantis was a thriving city filled with affluence and positivity, that was until it sank. Atlantis was said to have sunk in the sea in a single day and night. There has been a lot of speculation as to where that city may be, people have searched the straits of Gibraltar between Africa and Spain and found nothing as of yet. If Atlantis was real it would be over 11,000 years old according to our calculations. I actually do kind of have a feeling that we may one day find this lost city. Finally coming into number 1 we have Langville Montana. This is actually utterly creepy, it really has freaked me out. I was doing some heavy research into disappeared places and towns and spaces and Google Autocomplete kept suggesting Langville Montana disappearance. Now it would appear at the bottom in related searches too, as would Langville Montana incident or Langville Montana turned inside out, which is some stranger thing stuff if I've ever heard of it. Oddly, when I clicked the link or even searched it up in the search bar, the internet yielded absolutely no information. Not a sausage. To me, this makes things even weirder, right? Why am I being suggested a mystery town when there's no evidence of it? I'm thinking that not only did this town disappear, but its data was also expunged from the internet. Why? 
I love a good cover up theory and let me make it even better with some investigative journalism. Here is the Google trend page for Langville Montana disappeared. As you can see it was actually frequently searched for in July and August 2018 then a few times after. Here I've compared it to searches for me, my name, I'm not saying people google me a lot but I am a real person on a channel with a lot of subscribers so it does happen. So there was a time when Langville Montana was being googled loads like super loads. Again I'm just saying why is there no record if people are googling it? Questions. Questions. We need answers. Coming in at number 10, we have Audley's Town. Historians are baffled by the lost county down Irish village of Audley's Town. The town was run by landowner, the then Lord of the Land, Viscount Bangor, who lived in the town's manor, Castlewood. When he died, his wife remarried and evicted all of the townsfolk. She then sent them off on a boat called the Rose and they were told to set sail to Boston. The Rose left in 1852, but the boat never arrived in the New World. Some say that Lady Bangor's new husband, Major Savage Nugent hated the town folk and had them killed. These days, the town is covered over by woodland, and part of the disappeared town was used as a setting for Game of Thrones. Coming into number eight is Calico. Here is a picture of me at Calico Ghost Town in California. I stumbled across the place on Christmas Eve Eve in 2017. It was a very interesting time of life for me then, and coming across a ghost town seemed to kind of fit with that weird and intense era. So, Calico was an old silver mining town in the San Bernardino mountain range. The town was a flash in the pan of the silver rush era and was abandoned in 1907 with a brief return in 1915 when a cyanide plant was built to try and restore economic fortune. Sadly for Calico it was to no avail. The town is undoubtedly mysterious and spooky up in the mountains and in the middle of the desert which is pretty remote. It is also said that the town is haunted by not one but five ghosts. There's a little girl ghost who only appears to children. There's also a ghost named Tumbleweed Harris, the lady in a white gown who wanders the outskirts of town, an angry cowboy, and the ghost of a dog named Dorsey. Coming into number seven, we have the Library of Alexandria. Alexandria is a coastal city in Egypt, sitting at the south of the Mediterranean Sea. The city dates back to 331 BC and was once the thriving capital of Egypt, but was reduced to nothing more than a small fishing village in the late Ottoman period. Brutal ransackings and an earthquake destroyed a lot of the original ancient landmarks including the Alexandria Lighthouse and Cleopatra's tomb which has notably never been found. Most notably however was the biggest loss suffered by the city, the destruction of the Library of Alexandra. Now, This was a massive library, so big that it was hailed as the most significant in the ancient world. It was said to contain the equivalent of 100,000 books which in the early days of the written word was a lot. It's uncertain who destroyed the library, just that it's no longer there. Julius Caesar's been blamed, but so have many people who ransacked the city over its history. Moreover, while the city has been discussed a lot in literature, we don't know for sure if it ever really existed. Alexandria as a city was rebuilt eventually, and a city of the same name stands in its place, but the original landmark is by and large lost to the ground in the ocean, taking many of the secrets of the ancient world with it. Another ancient one up for you next, at number six we have the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Now, The Gardens of Babylon were one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. They've been described as some of the most fantastical roof gardens of all time and were thought to have been located in Babylonia in Iraq. The gardens were believed to have been destroyed sometime after the first century AD and many archaeologists have spent their lives looking for their remains. The existence is not confirmed by archaeological findings and there have been suggestions that the gardens are mythical. That being said, they were thought to be in Iraq and much of the country has been super ravaged by war over the years. Ok, I have to deviate from this video for a second to ask if anyone else remembers the Hanging Gardens of Babylon in Bill and Ted, because I absolutely swear that there was a Babylon bit but I can't find it anywhere online and rather like the gardens themselves I'm thinking are they mythical or is this like a Mandela effect thing that I've just discovered? Let me know! Coming into number five, we have Tynum. Tynum in England is a pretty spooky village indeed. The ghost village in South Dorset was abandoned in 1943 at the height of World War II. It was abandoned for fear of bombardment from the German forces. 225 villagers were rehomed, all of which thought that they would return after the war, but mysteriously, the British government purchased the land and kept it for military training. The village is now opened at various times of the year for controlled tourism, but those who have been 
been lucky enough to visit claim that it's very spooky indeed. In fact, some even claim that the village telephone rings even though it's disconnected from wires. The village was featured in a television show, Mysteries of the Abandoned, and this is what was said by visitors. The village pond looks like any other village pond in England, except there's no wildlife there. There are no ducks. It's eerily empty. Shut the front door! No ducks on the pond! Must be cursed, right? I have to say that the documentary is super dramatic and I kind of love it. They claim that it's eerie and that the church remains as it was in the 40s. Have a listen to this. I'm very, very here for the dramatic music. At a darker narrative. Like the cottages which are little more than empty shells. And these are in an unusual state of disrepair. Where are the ducks? Questions. Coming in at number four, we have the lost villages of the St. Lawrence. Controversially, in 1958, nine villages were flooded along the St. Lawrence River in Canada. Now, this was to make way for the St. Lawrence Seaway. The project was unpopular as 6,500 people were displaced, and of those people, the residents believed that the money that they got for their homes wasn't enough because the plans had already depressed property value. The villages were all in Ontario and are now under the water in the St. Lawrence River. Some of the areas are now popular scuba diving spots. Eerily, though, it is possible to spot the outlines of the villages from the water when levels are low. Another sunken city at number three, we have the withered city of Villa Epicuan. Villa Epicuan was a popular tourist resort near Buenos Aires, Argentina, but unfortunately, it flooded in 1985, which meant that hopes and livelihoods had to be abandoned in the water. Can you imagine? Disappearing into the water, Villa Epicuan became a sunken town. However, Weirdly, the waters began to recede in 2009 and now, after a drought, you can see more of the town emerging from the water than ever. 25 years after it disappeared, it began to re-emerge, only this time it was totally white, stripped of paint. The trees have died after their time underwater and away from the sun and now they're white too and the whole thing just looks ghostly and twisted and withered. Rusted cars and dislodged bathtubs litter the bank. Honestly, it looks so scary to me, but I also kind of love it. This town or city, more like, still exists, but may not in our lifetime, so I want to give you a little warning at number two. We have Venice. Venice is sinking. The historic town is made from 118 small islands connected by bridges and dates back to the 10th century BCE. The issue is here climate change and tourism. Cruise ships are turning up in the harbour, which disturbs the waters. Thousands of passengers disembark from the ships and trample the city, rarely without buying anything and contributing to the economy that could actually help save the city. The old buildings of Venice don't have stable foundations and they're gradually subsiding into the waters of the lagoon. Marry that with tourism and overcrowding and the rise in ocean levels in general, and it seems very much on the brink. It would be devastating to lose this city. Finally, coming into number one, we have Happy Valley. Happy Valley is not a happy place to be. The town used to be known as Williamstown and is located between Syracuse and Camden in upstate New York. Founded in 1850, the town was a farming community, but it was abandoned in the Great Depression. That being said, the Depression probably wasn't the reason people left, if the rumours are to be believed anyway. It is said that the men of Williamstown angered a witch that lived on the fringes of the community. How they angered her? Well, some say they taunted her, others say they abused her. Either way, in a fit of rage, the town was suddenly struck with plague that killed a whole chunk of the population. On top of that, crops began failing. Today, those in surviving towns near Happy Valley claim that actually it is haunted and they will not venture into the abandoned spot. Number 10. Centralia, Pennsylvania. Centralia was once a thriving mining town, but in 2009, the last living residents were finally evacuated from the town due to its toxic atmosphere and general ground instability. Since mining was no longer a career or necessity in the early 60s, the town's mining shafts were left abandoned and untouched, many of which ran straight beneath the town. In 1962, a fire, whose origins are unknown, ravaged these mining tunnels, turning Centralia into a furnace, burning 140 acres of land, and producing temperatures upward of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit under the earth. 1,000 degrees. That's 
That's crazy. <laughs> now, this not only caused the ground to crack, but produced toxic smoke as well as ground temperatures that made much of the town uninhabitable. There was no way to extinguish these fires, and they continue to burn hot to this day. Now, if this scenario sounds familiar, that's because it is. Horror fans know that the game Silent Hill was based on this town's tragic history. These days, no one lives there, but I can't believe people were still there in 2009. Number 9. West Castleton, Vermont West Castleton, once small, was once home to the slate quarries that New England is now known for. It was also the home to immigrants from Ireland, Russia, and Italy post-Civil War, and thrived for some time around 1850, when West Castleton Railroad and Slate Company found themselves on the shore of Lake Bamosine. For roughly 50 years, West Castleton was able to ride the wave of the boom and bust era, but quickly fell to its eventual demise in 1929. It continued to fight a losing battle against the times as Slate was no longer a popular option in construction, and that's what they were known for. By the time the Great Depression took hold of the Green Mountain State, the quarries were drained and rendered unprofitable in the 1930s. Along with its moneymaker becoming abandoned, the town was, as well as the people, up and left their homes in search of better opportunities, which makes the most sense. Remnants of the town remain in Bomocene State Park, where hikers can find various homes crumbling and caving in, but still standing, that remind them what the 1930s were like. Number 8. Seattle Underground, Washington Many have heard of the Great Seattle Fire, which occurred in 1889, but not many know Seattle was also home to an underground shopping network. These stores took a hit after the fire, and though they remained open, the city was eventually condemned in 1907. It had become home to dodgy dealings and was deemed fairly unsafe to wander around at that point, while also giving off a creepy vibe of something that was once thriving, but now remained a shell of what it had once home. Today, some of these underground passageways have been restored and are open for tours, however many remain closed to the public and are abandoned still to this day. Number 7. Bulloville, Florida This land was destined for use as a plantation by Charles Bulow in 1821. The goal was to house and grow cotton, indigo, rice, and even sugarcane, with an additional mill building under the construction of John Bulow. The local natives, the Seminole Indian tribe, didn't appreciate their land being turned into profit and set fire to the setup around January 11th, 1836. And listen, I usually don't support arson, but in this case, good for them. Abandoned by January 23rd, a great rosy glow was observed on January 31st in St. Augustine. John Below, discouraged by the destruction, died three months later at the age of 26 and was buried in St. Augustine. All that is left today of this plantation are the ruins of the sugar mill, several wells, a spring house, and a crumbling foundation of the mansion. The cleared fields have been reclaimed by the forest, and the area looks much as it did when it belonged to the Seminoles. Number 6. Roanoke Island, North Carolina The legend of Roanoke Island has been passed down from generation to generation since 1590, when a group of 120 English settlers mysteriously vanished. In the late 1500s, the English made their first attempts to settle in North America on Roanoke Island, which is off the coast of North Carolina. These first settlers ended up returning to England because of a shortage of food and Indian attacks. In 1587, a second colony was founded on Roanoke. It was then that Virginia Dare, the first baby born to English parents in North America, was born. John White, the leader of the colony, went to England to get more supplies, but when he returned in 1590, the settlement was deserted. All the settlers had mysteriously disappeared, and the only clue he found was the word Croatoan carved in a tree. Croatoan was the name of an island south of Roanoke that was home to a Native American tribe of the same name. Perhaps then the colonists were abducted by Native Americans, but to this day no one knows what happened to them. Number 5. Langville, Montana Langville was actually a real town in a small rural spot, possibly on the eastern plains. Now apparently it vanished entirely sometime in the early 2000s. The town even showed up on Google Maps, but no one could find it in person. Google Maps apparently has saved images from street views, but no map of the town. There's also been more than 7 million recorded searches for the town, and they have come up with. No one seems to know why or explain this as it doesn't exist. Today you'll struggle to find any photos or online mention of it. Legend has it that sometime in the early 1900s, a mysterious force swept over Langville. 
Anvil and turned its inhabitants inside out. The inside out inhabitants either died off or disappeared shortly after. Then some entity or organization didn't want anyone to know what happened. They came along and washed away all evidence of the town's existence. The cover up went so far as to scrub the internet of any mentions, evidence, or accounts. Believers would tell you that Langville disappeared because its people vanished under nefarious circumstances. Furthermore, they believe the government wants to keep it a secret from us, and it seems like only the inhabitants could give us the truth. Number 4. Saint Pierre Marnique In the late 1890s and early 1900s, Saint Pierre Marnique was known as a beautiful town, but they had something unique, a volcano. Now, citizens of the area were so used to the volcanic activity that no one took it seriously when fresh steaming vent holes and earth tremors started during April 1902. The minor explosions began at the summit of the volcano, ash began to rain down continuously, and the nauseating stench of sulfur filled the air. Again, no one thought this was an issue and that they should have left town. Even worse, more than a hundred snakes slithered down and invaded the town. Then on May 5th, a landslide of boiling mud and water from the Atang Set Crater Lake spilt into the River Blanche. It was followed by a tsunami that ended the lives of hundreds of people. Then three days later, May 8th, Mount Pelee exploded, sending an avalanche of white hot lava straight towards the town. Within three minutes, St. Pierre was completely obliterated and of its 30,000 population, there were only two people who survived. This was the worst volcanic disaster of the 20th century. Number 3. The New City Complex, New Jersey This town was originally called the New City Complex, but later was called Demon's Alley, and you'll find out why. Located along Route 23, the town was built by the City of New York Water and Reservoir Plant in order to house the workers of the facility. Things seemed to be pretty normal for a while, and then in 1992, it was found that the homes were abandoned, with no sign of burglary and everything in order, all possessions left behind, and in some cases, even meals left out for people who would never come home to eat them. Ever since, legends have abounded. One very popular story is that in the 1980s, a stranger moved into the town, after which there were various unexplained phenomena, and it was soon suspected that this newcomer was a cult leader. The mysterious individual then apparently led most of the townspeople down into the basement of one of the homes on false pretenses, and then proceeded to have their lives ended by members of his cult. Now there is no evidence that this took place, but the legend persists. Other theories are that the homes are abandoned set of a movie, or the site of a bout of rando or carbon monoxide poisoning, or that it was haunted, but no one really knows. For now, these houses sit rotting away and have become a popular urban legend in the area. Number 2. Urkhammer, Iowa This small rural town was apparently in rather good shape until around 1928, when some aerial photos emerged that appeared to show that there was no one living there, and that the field looked overgrown and untended. Things took a turn for the weird when there was a report from a tourist passing through who stopped at a gas station in the town to fill his tank, after which he had learned he had been ripped off and there was no gasoline in there at all. He then angrily headed back to town, but reported that he could not reach it, as it seemed to forever remain in the distance no matter how fast he drove. Even when he ran out of gas and walked, he could not reach the town, which was still sitting there before him, forever out of his reach. Other people driving past the town began to report that the previously bustling town seemed to be abandoned and lifeless, and when some investigated, they found rows and rows of houses sitting peacefully with no sign of the occupants. Other reports of anomalies would come in from the town as well, such as people who seemed to have witnessed the town actually evaporating into thin air, as if being absorbed into some other dimension, with one such account concerning a group fleeing from the area during the Dust Bowl of 1932 and going to the town to retrieve supplies. And coming in at number one is Ashley, Kansas. Ashley was a tiny farming community of around 700 people, and on August 16th, 1952, the area was rocked by a massive earthquake measuring 7.9 on the scale. When investigators finally arrived, it was oddly found that there was simply no one there. There was a smoking, heat belching blaze fissure measuring a thousand yards in length and approximately 500 yards in width. They found no one there, neither alive nor dead, even after a 12 day intensive search. An aftershock allegedly rocked the region in the coming days after the aborted search, and when rescuers arrived this time, the fissure was reportedly gone as mysteriously as it had appeared. Now, days before everyone disappeared on August 8th, there was a report from a local who claimed he had seen a small black opening in the sky, and not long after, police 
were bombarded with calls reporting the same thing. Things got stranger still when reports kept coming in about the weird atmospheric anomalies and that there were also people who had mysteriously gone missing without a trace. Other reports would filter in that the town was in total darkness as if the sun had never risen. Perhaps even more bizarre still were the reports that people were having conversations with long dead family members. Police would get hundreds of similar calls in the coming days, after which it was claimed that all of the children in the town had spontaneously vanished middle of the night on August 12th, 1952. And by August 16th, everyone was gone. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Olmec Civilization. The Olmec Civilization has often been referred to as the mother culture of Mesoamerica, and from somewhere between 1400 to 400 BC, the civilization rose in the Mexican Gulf Coast. The name Olmec came because they lived in the Olmen, the land of rubber. The Olmec Civilization was thriving and advanced, and they too had their own mysterious stone structures known as the Olmec Colossal Head. They even were able to successfully build aqueducts, which is an amazing feat for the time period. The civilization, however, started to see its decline around 400 BC. During this time, two of their major cities were just abandoned, which is very mysterious and of course super strange. They left behind everything, their buildings and structures, artifacts and statues. They just seemingly picked up and left. There isn't much left to go on, to be totally honest, but experts believe that some sort of natural disaster might have been a cause for the disappearance. Something like a drought or an eruption could have wreaked havoc on their food supply. There is also the possibility of conflict between them and other civilizations in the area. At the end of the day, exactly what happened here remains quite a mystery, with only the remains of the civilization left to look at for clues. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Ancestral Puebloans. This group, who were a culture of indigenous Americans, built their lives in what is now referred to as the Four Corners region of the United States. This area now consists of southeastern Utah, northeastern Arizona, northwestern New Mexico, and southwestern Colorado. This group was able to create beautiful stone homes into the side of cliffs during the 12th and 13th centuries. When I tell you that the level of skill and work this took was incredible, it really was. Some of these places would have hundreds of rooms, and they were the tallest buildings in the United States until the creation of skyscrapers in the late 1800s. That is absolutely wild. Unfortunately, these works of arts wouldn't be lived in for long as the civilization met a rapid and violent decline. Many experts will point to religious and political conflict as a contributing factor to the decline of this civilization, but no one is totally clear. What we do know is that there have been discoveries in the area that point to violence, human consumption, water management problems exacerbated by a drought, you know, just a lot of bad stuff that clearly shows the ending was an incredibly tough time for the people going through it. In the end, this all led to many of these people having to abandon their homes and flee south. While this settlement collapsed, it doesn't mean that the culture or the people were entirely gone. Many modern day descendants of this civilization include the Hopi and the Zuni peoples. In our number 8 spot today we have Cahokia. This settlement was established somewhere around 1,200 years ago and it was a river valley community located near what is now St. Louis, Missouri in the United States. This is actually quite an incredible settlement because it was the largest north of Mexico at the time, with a population of around 20,000 people. The city had things like buildings, plazas, and one of the things that they were most known for was these massive mounds. The largest was known as the Monk's Mound, and it was 100 feet tall. The location of this settlement proved to be amazing for a while. Its spot near several rivers made it the perfect trading location. This was all great and ideal, until it really wasn't. Experts believe that somewhere around 1200 AD, the population was wiped out by a massive flood that hit the area. Some wondered if the flood only contributed to an already dwindling civilization because they believed that perhaps resources in the area were quickly disappearing or maybe they had been hit by disease. Others believed that the flood was the first massive event but that perhaps it was followed by a little ice age that only sealed the fate. In our number 7 spot today we have the Maya. The Maya are often referred to as one of the most advanced civilizations in our history. They carved huge stone cities in the jungles of South Mexico and Central America, and they weren't just plain and simple places. They were filled with plazas, palaces, pyramids, and temples. They created one of the most famous calendars. They had math and astronomy. This is all to say that this was one of the most thriving civilizations, and they reached their peak around 250 
to 900 AD. Here's the thing though, nobody is entirely sure what happened after this. It is believed that it was most likely a combination of famine and drought, as well as the change the environment saw due to the deforestation that happened for farming. This all would have caused there to be a lot more civil unrest, and it's likely that neighboring cities would have turned on each other. We do know, however, that it took around 200 years for the civilization to disappear, so it wasn't just one single event, and it was quite a process, which is such a testament to how strong the Maya people were. While talking about this, it is very important for me to note that I'm talking about the downfall of the Maya civilization, and not the downfall of the Maya as people. There are many people still alive with Maya ancestry who live all over our world. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Indus. The Indus became one of the world's earliest civilizations as they began to build their settlements some 8,000 years ago. They live in what is now India and Pakistan, and they expanded over great distances, 386,000 square miles, which is far more than other more well-known civilizations of a similar time period. In fact, this group is thriving so much that they accounted for around an estimated 10% of the world's population at the time. This civilization was completely thriving until around 1900 BC when things took a serious turn for the worst. They began to abandon cities and started to move southeast, and no one is entirely sure why. There was a leading theory that perhaps other groups of people from the north brought about their collapse, but that theory has since been put aside. At this point in time, more recent research is pointing towards a hiatus in the monsoon season that could have played a role in the downfall. When the monsoon season disappeared for essentially two centuries, this of course would make it nearly impossible for them to continue farming for food in the way that they had. Experts believe some other factors also played a role, such as natural disasters, like earthquakes, or even the outbreak of some diseases like malaria or cholera. In our number 5 spot today, we have Easter Island. Oh sh**. Easter Island. Many of us have heard of Easter Island before, whether it's because of the world famous stone statues or because of its incredible remoteness. But whatever the reason, let's take it back to the beginning. Sometime between 300 and 1200 AD, the Rapa Nui people found and settled the island. This is quite the feat already, considering the closest continental point to Easter Island is a point in central Chile that is 3,512 kilometers away. It's so remote, so the fact that they even found it is amazing. And then, what they managed to complete is even more fascinating. Without advanced tools or even wheels, they managed to create the most famous Moai statues, the largest of which stood 32 feet tall and weighed 82 tons. Of course, this means that these early people on the island were brilliant, hardworking, and super advanced, but something happened. And by the 1800s, the statues had toppled, the population of the island took a drastic downturn, and the leaders of the island were being overthrown. Experts have been able to get a pretty good idea of what happened in this instance though. Firstly, they took a look at charcoal fragments as well as pollen in the sediment, and they were able to determine that those living on the island had cut down almost all of the trees, and the rats on the island were eating the seeds of the trees before they had the ability to re-germinate. This led to disaster completely. According to an article on History.com written by Jesse Greenspan, quote, This ecological catastrophe, which eliminated the ability to make rope or seagoing canoes and reduced the population to burning grass for fuel may have then ushered in a period of mass starvation and civil war. The arrival of Europeans only added to the decimation starting in 1722 when the first Europeans to set foot on Easter immediately shot to death several islanders. By the 1870s, several waves of smallpox along with a major Peruvian slave raid had reduced the number of natives to roughly 100. Now, Easter Island is a special territory and it once again has a thriving population. As of 20 2017, the Chilean census registered that 7,750 people were living on this island, 45% of which considered themselves Rapa Nui. In our number 4 spot today, we have Gobekli Tepe. This is a pre-pottery, neolithic archaeological site that is located in Turkey. This site has been dated all the way back to somewhere from 9,500 to 8,000 BC, making it the world's oldest known megaliths, which truly is just incredible. This site is comprised of a bunch of large circular 
pillar structures that are being supported by massive stone pillars, many of which are decorated with abstract anthropomorphic details and things which have provided very rare and very valuable insight into prehistoric religion and the iconography of the times when it was built. One of the most amazing things about this area is that it was first used at the beginning of the Neolithic period, which marks the oldest human settlements anywhere in the world. It has been called the world's first temple, and it was used by groups of nomadic hunter-gatherers from a wide area. Here's what makes this so remarkably interesting though. Despite what I said earlier, this place is not a settlement, and instead was used by many people. The site was essentially built by Stone Age humans, who came from about a 200 kilometer radius around the site. It isn't quite clear why they stopped using it, but what is clear is that without a doubt, this was one of the best archaeological finds our modern society has ever had, as it gives us just a glimpse into what life was like in prehistoric times, and it totally changes what we once thought about the timeline of our history. In our number 3 spot today, we have Cattle Hoyek. Moving on over from Gobekli Tepe, we have this settlement that sits not too far away at all. Located in what is now Turkey, this settlement was thriving around 8,000 years ago and was known specifically for its engineering and architecture. One really cool thing about how this city was set up was rather than traditional roads, the people who lived there got around by using the rooftops. I'd feel like I was in Assassin's Creed, that sounds so cool, but I guess for them it was just the most logical setup, especially considering all of the buildings were connected to one another. The people who lived here had a tradition of burying their past loved ones under the floors in their homes, as they did not have any sort of open burial space. In the end, it isn't quite clear exactly what happened to the residents of this ancient city, although there are of course theories. Because of the fact that this city didn't expand as widely as other civilizations seen in the area, many believe that perhaps disease came, spread, and rapidly declined the population. Archaeological work continues on the site, however, even today, to give us every insight possible into the lives of these ancient people. In our number 2 spot today, we have Thonis. I've spoken about Thonis before because this place was super important to legend. Greek legend says that this was the city where Hercules took his first steps into Africa, as well as the place where Paris hid Helen before the Trojan War began. And for years, people thought it was just that a place in the legends. That was until the early 2000s when it had its modern rediscovery. As it turns out, just over 2000 years ago, either an earthquake, a tsunami, or a combination of the two hit the city and submerged it underwater. After five years of searching, archaeologist Frank Gaudio located the ruins of the city underwater as they had been submerged in the ocean. Since then, excavations and explorations of the ancient city have taken place, and it was stocked full of some incredibly cool treasures from thousands of years ago. In 2010, a type of ancient Nile River boat was found here, and even just in August of 2021, it was announced that wicker baskets that contained fruits of the Duum palm tree, as well as grape seeds that date back to the early 4th century BC, had been found among the ruins. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have Scara Bray. This is an area that is located in Scotland, and it was found in an exceptionally surprising way. In 1850, there was a huge storm that hit Scotland, and it was so bad that around 200 people passed away from it. The next day, however, once the storm had passed, residents of the Orkney Isles began to notice that part of a cliff had dislodged, but it uncovered a sort of hidden settlement. Tests were able to date this site back from 3200 BC to 2200 BC, and it was shown to have been inhabited for about 600 years. There were round stone homes here, and the roofs were made out of whalebone and peat. And the design of this little city suggested that there wasn't a hierarchy, but rather a group of people living peacefully as farmers, herdsmen, and traders. While the site is small, the houses are in quite great shape for the amount of time it's been. This little settlement is Europe's most complete Neolithic village, and while it is older than Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids, it's been called the Scottish Pompeii because of how well preserved it is. No one is exactly exactly sure why the residents of this village abandoned it, but it is likely that a change in climate is somewhat if not fully responsible, and a storm might have been the reason those living here had to leave in haste, which is deduced by how all of their belongings were left behind. Off our list, and at number 10, we have Pripyat, Ukraine, which was the city most affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986, an infamous incident that released a massive amount of radiation out into the world. The accident forced 
entire towns to abruptly empty out, and the area within a 19 mile radius of the plant was deemed uninhabitable. For at least another 180 years, absolutely insane. There are a ton of spooky photo ops, but the most famous is the decaying amusement parks. I mean, talk about creepy. How to visit the Chernobyl region is about two hours away, and tours range from private visits to multi-day itineraries. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure one day is enough for my itinerary. <laughs> I don't need an itinerary because I'll remember what I'm doing and it's only lasting one day. At number nine, we have Kennecott, Alaska. Nearly 200 million worth of copper was processed in Kennecott, a self-contained mining town located in a Wrangell Street, Ellis National Park from 1911 to 1938. Well, according to the National Park Services, as these stories usually go, the residents cleared out once the copper resources started to dwindle and most of the buildings now have been abandoned for over 60 years. Well, there is hope on the horizon. However, the NPS acquired many of the Kennecott's buildings and lands in 1998 and hoped to restore some of the buildings like the post office and the general store for modern use. Well, do you want to see a cool and creepy photo? Well, our pick would be empty skating rinks, you guys are seeing an empty tennis court, or how about visit the NPS run the visitor center which is open from Memorial Day through Labor Day where you can actually pick up brochures or arrange a guided tour with the park ranger Kennecott's recreational hall which is fully restored in 2004 which is also available to rent for events next up number eight Bodie California now this is one old west ghost town you're looking for once home to 10,000 people Bodie boomed in the late 1880s after gold was found in the hills surrounding Mono Lake not long after after though, Bodhi transitioned into a period of steady decline until reaching ghost status around 1915 according to California Department of Parks and Recreation records. So why is this city such in great shape today? Well, you can thank the state of California for adopting the town and turning it into a state historic park in 1962. Coming to number 7 on this list, Waiuta, South Island, New Zealand. In the early 1900s, miners built a town right on top of a whole lot of gold bearing quartz rocks, which would go on to produce 750,000 ounces of gold from 1.5 million tons of quartz. I'm kind of seeing a theme here where gold is creating immense popularity and wealth before destroying the very places it was found. People mine the gold and then when it's all done, they get the heck out of there, leaving the town abandoned. Well, by the 1930s, the town had its own hospital, police station, and post office, plus a population of 600. The isolated city thrived until the main mining shaft collapsed, and that was back in 1951, forcing residents to abandon their town. Today, the Department of Conservation works to preserve the remaining buildings and hiking trails around the site. The department even converted one of the buildings, the Waita Lodge, into a 30 bunk facility for school groups and campers needing over accommodations. It is said that the original signpost pointing to a mining industry that no longer exists make for a great photo. Folks venture westward from Reefton on State Highway 7 and keep following the signs for Waita onto an unpaved road until you reach the spooky destination. You can explore on your own using the unmarked trails or a book tour in advance through friends. I don't know what friends would escort you through a haunted town, but it doesn't sound like great ones. I think you need to lose them. Number six, we're bringing you Orador sur Glen, France. Warning, this is quite a dark story. On June 10th, 1944, German troops raided the village of Orador sur Glane and murdered 642 men, women, and children. Is this real life right now? Well, National Geographic reports, after the massacre, the military set fire to the churches, barns, and homes, leaving behind only a few surviving residents. The village has remained untouched since the horrific accident, serving as a shrine to those who died that June day. Number five, we got Paramedian Svalbard, Norway. The archipelago of Svalbard, located between mainland Norway and the North Pole, is home to about 2,145 humans. Not a lot. A thousand polar bears and one seriously bone-chilling ghost town. Paramedian named for the pyramid-shaped mountain looming nearby. Paramedian came to prominence in the 1930s. 
when the Soviets took ownership of the area's coal fields and quickly began mining operations. After World War II, they started spending more money on the enterprise building hospitals, cafeterias and houses, all in the block style fashion typical of the Soviet era architecture. The biggest hit came in 1996 when an airplane flying from Moscow to Svalbard crashes en route killing all 141 passengers on board, many of them Paramedian residents. The tragedy slashed the morale and it was fully abandoned in 1998. As for the site today, Rachel Neuer of Smithsonian Magazine sums it up perfectly. It was as if several hundred people had abruptly stopped what they were doing and simply walked away. At number four, we have Thamestown, Shanghai, China. China is a big fan of a replica cities. In fact, Shanghai has seven European themed towns built to give wealthy residents a new place to call home. There's a Dutch inspired canal lined neighborhood, a Paris replica completed with a 300 foot Eiffel Tower, and even a slice of Sweden inspired churches and Nordic houses included. But we're particularly fans of the Thames town. A British coffee catch is 40 minutes from downtown Shanghai. Here you'll find a scale replica of the Christ Church, statue of Shakespeare and Winston Churchill, and even some familiar red telephone booths scattered here and there. As curiously cute as this mini city sounds on paper, well it ended up being a complete failure. In fact, all of the seven experimental towns are now pretty much abandoned. Well, how do you visit? Well, travelers are more than welcome to walk the cobblestone streets of all seven replica cities. To get to the Thames town, they recommend taking the Shanghai Metro 9 to the Song Jing Zing Xing station. And because I'm pronouncing those words absolutely correct, you guys won't get lost. And then, if you make it to the station that I just said, you can take a taxi for the rest of the way. Only about 2.5 miles away and about $2. USD. Finally down, and at number three, for abandoned towns you shouldn't visit, we're talking about the Great Salt Tire, Utah. And if you find yourself in Salt Lake City, Utah, you'll probably hear about the Great Salt Lake or uh, the Dead Sea of America where you can float on the water. Now, I must tell you that you'll encounter corpses of dead seagulls, swarming flies, and a putrid odor. If you take the plunge, there's no way to miss the cell tire. A huge building with Moorish domes that you can see at the same time time when you can smell the stench. The salt tire that you see now is actually the third one. The first one was built in 1893 in order to provide a safe venue for recreation for families. It became immensely popular with all kinds of events until its pavilion and few other buildings were ravaged by the fire in 1925. Although it was built a second time, it never achieved the same popularity. In a period marked by the Great Depression, World War II, and several mishaps, it finally got destroyed in an arson fire in 1970. The third one was built in 1981, approximately a mile away from the original venue. But you kind of take away the whole history of it, so I can see why it never became as popular. Now, number two on this list, we have Silver City, Idaho, which was at one point one of the largest cities in Idaho. So just imagine one of the largest cities being abandoned. Imagine where I live in Toronto, I'm going out my door, and it's like, where did everybody go? Well, the town was established in the mid 1800s during the, well, you guys guessed it, the gold and silver rush of the Western United States. By the 1880s, the town's population rose to 2,500 people. At its height in the 1880s, it was a gold and silver mining town with a population of around 2,500 and it had approximately 75 businesses. As mining in the area began to die down, so did the city. In 1942, the last mine in the area was closed. Well, you can still visit Silver City, which currently has around 70 buildings, including old churches, a hotel, and it has a lot of old homes that you can see. And finally, in number one, when it comes to the creepiest place in America, no one can miss a Bannock Ghost Town because of its paranormal stories. This old mining town is located near Grasshopper Creek in Montana. The area is famous as a National Historic Landmark and operates as a state park in the US. The photos of this place are wild. Literally, it looks like the quintessential wild, wild west. To enter Bannock, follow the easiest ways to get there. From Dillon, you can take the interstate highway route to quickly reach your destination. It was famous as a mining town, but then moved towards a visiting place and gradually the town got empty from the residents before the 1960s. Now visitors come to explore the unlocked buildings. Mm -hmm. 